Good Friday. How can one describe such a day? The wrongdoing of all humanity putting to an end an innocent man, the Son of God. This is the story of Jesus' death by way of a cross, all in one moment bringing death to the bright light of our future. He never stopped loving us, and yet this is the incredible part of it. Our sin stopped his heart. Our sin drove the nails firmly in the hands of God. All along, these were the plans. We told ourselves that we were in control, and this was deemed sufficient for all of us. The brutal beating, the inhuman flogging, the naked humiliation. Heaven watched and saw it all. Our rebellion, our guilt, our shame, erasing the very notion of reconciling us with God, our sin and our debt, overcoming Jesus. Here is our king, obliterated. The enemy laughing, his plans unstoppable. There's no longer the sound of freedom rising. Now God's people are utterly broken. Behold the chains of mortality. Yes, this is what is true. We had heard the stories of old. The lost are found, the blind can see, the weak are made strong. But now we are witnesses to this reality. God is dead. We'd almost believed there is a way of redemption. There is a life of fulfillment. There is a peace beyond understanding. Now we know better. For us, we can say that God is encapsulated in this one realization. The single greatest sacrifice in human history is finished. How clearly we can see it. So what's so good about Good Friday? Just one thing, that the blood of Jesus can reverse the curse of sin and raise the dead to life. How clearly we can see it is finished. The single greatest sacrifice in human history encapsulated in this one realization. We can say that God is for us. Now we know better. There is a peace beyond understanding. There is a life of fulfillment. There is a way of redemption. We had almost believed God is dead, but now we are witnesses to this reality. The weak are made strong. The blind can see. The lost are found. We had heard the stories of old. Yes, this is what is true. The chains of mortality utterly broken. Behold, freedom rising. Now God's people are unstoppable. There's no longer the sound of the enemy laughing. His plans obliterated. Here is our King, Jesus, overcoming our sin and our debt, reconciling us with God, erasing the very notion of our rebellion, our guilt, our shame. Heaven watched and saw it all, the naked humiliation, the inhuman flogging, the brutal beating, and this was deemed sufficient for all of us. We told ourselves that we were in control. All along, these were the plans firmly in the hands of God. Our sin drove the nails, our sin stopped his heart, and yet this is the incredible part of it. He never stopped loving us. The bright light of our future all in one moment bringing death to death by way of a cross. This is the story of Jesus, the Son of God, an innocent man putting to an end the wrongdoing of all humanity. How can one describe such a day? Good Friday. So what is so good about today? What's so good about Good Friday? Good evening, RCC. We just want to take some time to reflect 
on uh, today and what it meant in the life of Jesus. Today is the darkest day in the history of man. You may ask why. Well, because Jesus, the purest man to ever live, died. He didn't just die. He was put to death on a cross. He took the weight of all of our sin, the weight of humanity on His shoulders. and was crushed by that weight. This is the day that our Savior died. Oftentimes, I think we don't like to reflect on this truth. I think we may like to think of the Last Supper. We think of the Last Supper and, and the meal and breaking the bread and His body broken for us and, and just that symbolism. But oftentimes, when it comes to the actual death of Jesus on the cross, we don't like to think of it. Why? Well, very simply, Jesus died on the cross to pay the price for your sin and mine. There's some guilt in that. But most of all, I think it's because the death of Jesus was very ugly. It wasn't pretty. When you think about what he went through, he was declared guilty by the Jewish leaders, guilty by the Roman government. When they went to release a prisoner, either Jesus or a notorious prisoner named Barabbas, the crowds picked Barabbas, no doubt, some of those in the crowds that said Barabbas were around when Jesus entered the city with people shouting Hosanna. The same people that were in that crowd, some of them were in this crowd too, saying release Barabbas. Or at least staying around in silence watching this happen. We see that Jesus was imprisoned like a prisoner. He was paying the price for our sin. He was going to go to the cross to be crushed by that weight. But even before that, we see just how brutal his death was. He was whipped, flogged. If you heard of a cat of nine tails, the whip that they had had different tails on it. And at the end of each one was either glass or animal bone or metal that's sharp and edged and rigid that they would put on there and that they would whip with. It would go into the skin. They'd rip it out on the way back. His flesh was torn when he was flogged. A lot of experts say that it could have put mortal wounds in his body. It could have lacerated his liver. It could have done a lot of damage to him, and that could have been the point of when Jesus died, but it wasn't. He bled. They put a crown of thorns around his head and, and pushed it into his skull so he would bleed. After this beating and, and, and they spat on him, and after the flogging, they made him carry his own cross to his death. Once they got there, they nailed him to the cross. They put nails in his hands, nails in his feet, and they watched as he suffocated under his weight. If you're not familiar with uh, crucifixion, if you didn't hold yourself up and you sagged down, you would suffocate by your own weight. So you had to hold yourself up, and once your strength went away, you could just you just lay down, you just suffocate under your own weight. So they watched this. They continued to mock him spit on him, make fun of him, laugh, find joy in his pain all the way to the end. But in the craziness of all of this, what we see, we see something, this is what blows my mind about who Jesus was. In the midst of all this, what's going on, Jesus says this, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. The people who declared him guilty, who beat him, flogged him, spat on him, made him carry his cross, nailed him to the cross, he asked God to forgive them. It's insane to me, but then when I think about my sin, I'm just as guilty. I'm just as guilty as, as the next person of, uh, uh, of, of making my own choices against God and causing my sin to be nailed up on that cross, nailed to Jesus. And he says, forgive me. He says, forgive Ryan. God, forgive Ryan. 
He says, God, forgive you. He offers that to everyone. And this is the very thing that he is dying for. We've seen this come down in history, this idea of, uh, of love, sacrificial love, even Titanic. Have you seen that movie? I've never seen the whole thing, but I know what happens. In the movie, Jack and Rose, they're in love, and, and at the very end, there's not enough room on the door, and Jack's in the water, the freezing water, and eventually he dies because of it. He sacrifices his life for Rose. You know, there's a lot of conspiracy theorists that say, you know, he could have survived too. There's enough room on that door. The buoyancy could have worked. They could have both been on it. But it wouldn't have been a great movie. It wouldn't have been as good. Why? Because love is about sacrifice. Love is a verb. Love is something that we do. It's a sacrifice. And even in that movie, we see that, and it's solidified in people's mind that Jack loved Rose. Listen, the reason Good Friday is good is because it shows us the greatest act of love the world has ever seen. There's no greater act of love than Jesus dying on the cross. He didn't just die for those who were in front of him. He died for all of us throughout history. He loves us enough that he died on the cross for our sins. When he declared, God forgive them for they don't know what they do, it echoes throughout history. It echoes in your life and my life. When we make the mistakes, when we sin against God, his voice echoes, God forgive them, God forgive them. His forgiveness is always there. Even his friends, Peter, one of his closest friends, one of his best friends. Jesus said, Peter, you're going to deny me three times. Peter does. He even curses his name. And Jesus died for him too. I find it interesting. I bet you Peter at that moment when, when Jesus says, you're going to deny me three times, inside of him, Peter probably knew he was right. Peter probably knew at some point I'm going to bend and break under the pressure of sin or the temptation to sin, to deny Jesus. And he did break. For all of us today, I think there's times in our life when we feel the pressure, the weight of sin, or the temptation of it, and we eventually crack. We all do. The echo of Jesus throughout the history of God forgive them echoes in your life at that very moment. While we were still sinners, ones who would have sat around and watched Jesus die on the cross, while we were still sinners, his enemies, Christ died for us. That's the greatest act of love we've ever seen. So I'm here to tell you, as ugly as Good Friday is, it's equally full of love. Not cheap love, but real, deep, sacrificial love that Christ has for you and Christ has for me. This is what makes Friday so good. This is what makes Good Friday so special. It's about how far Jesus went to love you and me. No one will ever go that far to love you. No one could pay that price. No one could die that death but Jesus. And he did it because he loves you. You were enough for him. There's nothing in heaven, there's nothing on earth that could have stopped him from rescuing you from dying this death. So, while it's hard for us to focus on this, it's hard for us to really take time out of our days and take time out of our lives to focus on this death because it is so ugly. It's necessary. This is extremely necessary for all of us. This act of love shows how deep, how long, how wide and how high Christ's love is for you and for me. When you read 
about the passion of Christ. These last hours of Jesus' life. I don't want you to look away and say, I don't want to see that. I want you to look to it and just see how much your Savior loves you. Maybe you've never made the decision to make Christ your Lord and Savior. Maybe you've never been baptized. I want you to understand right now what Jesus went through to get you, to rescue you, to pay the price for your sins. He did this all for you. This was a rescue plan from the very beginning. And while the climax of his life and his ministry here on Good Friday and his death, it's ugly, it is equally loving. We'll find out why on Sunday. But for tonight, for today, I want you to take time to grasp grasp how much Jesus went through to win you back. I want you to think through exactly what Christ did to bring you back to him, to rescue you. So as this video ends, I don't want these feelings to enter, this thought to end. I want you to reflect on how much Jesus loves you. I want you to reflect on his life and his last days the pain he went through, because what Jesus declares is the pain was worth it. The cost was great, but the result is greater. The result is we have a bridge back to God. We have a way back to Him. We have redemption in Christ, in Christ alone. So let's reflect on this truth. And tonight, let's let's just really reflect on the ugliness of, but equally the love that we see on the cross. Let's pray. God, I thank you that um, we have this truth. God, this truth that your death was hard to look at. It's hard to look at. It's hard to even hear, to think about God, because it's my sin that caused you to be nailed on that cross, and I feel guilty for that. I feel the guilt. I feel the shame in all of that. But God, on the other side of that coin is you did it because you love me. You did it because you love everyone watching this. You did it because you love your children and you wanted to create that bridge back to you for us. So God, tonight as we reflect on this, let our hearts break because of the pain because of the hurt, because of the death that our sin caused. But God, let it be mended by the hope that we have for Sunday morning. What we know happened on Sunday morning. Lord, let us never stop waging war on sin in our life. You won the war on the cross, God, but there's still skirmishes going on in our lives. God, let us not quit fighting that. Let us fight for you, God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for the cross. We thank you. We love you. Amen.